Welcome to Norbury Wharf. Uh, now we want to show you the basics you need to know before you take out one of our fleet of boats. When you arrive at Norbury, one of your party should enter our offices through the double doors on the wharf and you'll be directed to a parking space. Your boat, whether it's for two or ten people, has everything you need on board to enjoy a peaceful holiday on the canals. Just add your luggage, food and drink. Now you'll find your boat has its engines running, the gas central heating turned on and is completely ready for setting off on your adventure. Every boat has its own manual where you can check on the function of each part of the vessel and piece of equipment. And on the top of every boat you'll also find a boat pole or long shaft as we call it, a pole with a hook on one end and a gangplank. Now the long pole is used for pushing the narrowboat away from obstructions or if you go aground. Boat hooks are useful for reaching material in the water. The gangplank should only be used once you are securely tied up and the gap between the boat and the bank is too wide for comfort. There's also a life ring and details on how to use it are in the video on cruising. Individual buoyancy aids are also available if you require them for crew members and should be booked in advance. So let's move to the sharp end or bow if you want to be technical. Now here's where the water is stored in a big tank under the deck. You need to fill it every day using the hose pipe which goes into the tank through a filler cap at the bow. Now as you travel you'll see Canal and River Trust water points. Connect the other end of the hose to these taps and run water in until it's so full it overflows on the boat. Now also on the bow, or perhaps in stern lockers, it varies from boat to boat, you'll also find the windlasses you need to operate locks, as well as the spikes and hammer you can use to moor up if there are no mooring rings. There's also a handcuff key which is required to unlock the mechanism on some urban locks. In the main living area you'll find the telly. It's 12 volt and there's a manual to help you work it. Mobile Wi-Fi is also available on any boat. It needs to be booked before you arrive and details of how to use it are in that boat manual again. Heating and cooking on the boat is powered by gas and there are cut-off points throughout the boat but it's important that if you ever smell gas in the boat you turn off the gas completely at the gas bottles, usually in the bow locker or boxed in at the stern, and get everybody off the boat and call our emergency line, the numbers in the boat's handbook. The cooker's gas and you need to light the oven, the grill or the rings with the lighter provided or the pizza spark button on the cooker itself. The fridge is electric and it's best on the number two setting. The central heating is gas powered. It will be lit when you take over the boat, as we said, although radiators may be turned off in the summer. If you decide to turn it off, then before turning it back on again, you need to check that the reservoir is full. You just remove this cover and check the water level is between maximum and minimum. Top it up with tap water if need be. To turn it on you simply push and turn this button and hold it down until it ignites or push down the ignition button. You can check it's the light through the small inspection glass at the bottom. That's if it doesn't light first time then you repeat the procedure. Now valves can turn individual radiators on and off to suit you and the heating is also controlled by a thermostat. Domestic hot water is heated by the engine and or the central heating boiler so if you have uh, turned the central heating off it's possible that the water may be cold in the morning. No problem, all you have to do is start the engine, wait for about 30 minutes and you have piping hot water. Moving to the bathroom, it's important that you don't put anything down the toilet that might block it. Wipes, nappies and similar objects will cause problems that may well offend your nose and may require a chargeable call out to unblock it. When you have a shower you turn it on with the adjustable tap control and turn the shower pump on at the same time. 
you will find the switch for the pump next to the shaft. There is an inverter that turns 12 volt battery power into mains power. You only need to use it when powering a 240 volt item such as a hairdryer. And when you do need to use it, it's best to leave the engine running. It powers all 240 volt items on the boat and it must be turned off after use. Throughout the boat, you'll find fire extinguishers as well as fire blanket in the kitchen. Now these are dry powder extinguishers and the instructions are clearly printed on them. However, in the event of a fire, you're advised to leave the boat for dry land as quickly as possible and dial 999. There are also clearly labelled isolation points for fuel and electricity, but you shouldn't need to use them unless asked by a Norbury Wharf engineer. Now at the stern of the boat, uh, this is where you control everything from. Before you set off, you'll need uh, to check the oil, and the dipstick is here, and the water here, on a daily basis, first thing in the morning before you start your cruise. To start the engine, you turn the key and preheat for 20 seconds before turning it further on to start. Once the engine is running, ensure the key is not returned to the off position or the engine won't charge the batteries. When you want to stop the engine, you push the stop button till it does exactly that and then you turn the key off. If you see any lights come up on the engine panel or you hear strange noises from the engine, pull over, turn it off and give us a call. Now, you don't want to sink the boat, so this is important. This is about the weed hatch, which lets you remove anything that gets entangled with the propeller. If you have that problem, first turn the engine off. Don't use the weed hatch with the engine running and it's probably best to remove the ignition key. Then loosen the fixing and remove the hatch. You'll have to get your arm wet to remove anything around the propeller and when it's gone you must put the weed hatch back and tighten those fixings before you start again. If you don't, the boat will sink. Every day when you stop at the end of the day, run the bilge pump here to ensure any water has been cleared from the engine room. Check to see the water stop being pumped before you turn it off, just look over the side of the boat. In addition, you should tighten down the stern gland greaser to minimise dripping. A couple of turns should do it. If you have pets on board, please ensure they're secure when outside the cabin and they don't saw the interior furnishings. You must also control them on the towpath by keeping them on a lead and please clean up after them. Children must be supervised by an adult at all times. Now rubbish can be bagged and disposed of at most canal and river trust service areas, the same places you fill up with water. At the end of your holiday, please remember you must return the vessel to Norbury Wharf by 9.30am on the final day of your hire. Please moor it stern on with the other hire boats on the side of the wharf you collected it from. You must hand in the boat keys and pay for any diesel used before collecting your car and leaving. It's also important that you check out our second video on cruising with your boat and you can look at the Canal and River Trust's online Boaters Handbook video. Details have been sent with your booking.